Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have an amplifier here, and the paper says, although you possibly can't see it because of the reflection, but it says one channel okay, one channel in protect mode. Okay, this thing is quite heavy, not as heavy as some I've had. You can see it's MF1200 MOSFET Professional Power Amplifier made by Altair. Okay. You can hear the weight of that, yeah. <laughs> so, as always with these amps, I open them up and have a look first to see what I may see. And then we can work out what we need to do with this one. And there it is. So, two very large port pie transformers. Four extremely large 15,000 microfarad 100 volt capacitors that can certainly give you a very nasty shock, okay. We have plus minus here, just to be tough from the call of the wires. These will be ground on these two terminals. One relay here. And there are the two amplifier boards. Okay. They may be the same, just one is upside down to the other. Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks something like that. I can see another relay down there, okay, at the bottom on that one. So they kind of like mirror image of each other or something like that. We have some more wires over here, another power supply board at the back there by the looks of it. Quite possibly a 15 volt supply that one. There will be one somewhere on here I would think. Hopefully not too difficult to work on this one. We're not going to have any short circuits on the input because one channel is actually working. We may have some problem with some output transistors or something on the one that isn't working. Given then the fact that it does power up with one channel in protect and one not. And thinking that through, yeah, I will power this up, but I'll just connect the light bulb current limiter. Let's see what it does. Well, it comes on bright and then is going dimmer. So that's charging the capacitors. I'm okay, this is not going to do anything nasty. We can switch that off and we'll try and power this up. I'll get the other camera where you can see what happens on the front display. There it is. Okay, so we'll power this up. And straight away, this is actually saying thermal. Okay, it's not an error, it's on thermal on one channel. So that's what it's actually doing. Ah, it stays running the fans even when you switch this on or off at the front. That just gradually goes out. Okay, that's fun. Yeah. Thermal. Okay, so one thermal area. I'm going to work on the principle at first that this is picking up like a phantom area because the thermal LED comes on straight away, which seems a bit strange. Obviously, nothing can be hot that quickly. So I need to figure out which of these two channels the problem is on. It looks like, but it's a bit hard to say, the little PCB that actually has the LEDs is down there we can see that and here we have some wires brown red orange gray pink yeah white so we have six wires there and we have the same on the other channel and all these wires run through this loom one of them goes to here okay and the other one goes down there to the other amplifier so I need to just figure out which amplifier is which. This is marked channel one on this side. So I think I can either disconnect one of these or and power it up. Or maybe I can just get on with the meter. The other way would be to look at the speaker connectors down here and see where they go to. I had a look, it looks like these speaker connectors, which is channel two, go to this board, and this one, which is channel one, goes down under that side to this board. That's how it works. If 
from what I can see, this is the actual speaker output on this one. And then the other one is kind of like the same connected buried at the bottom on that one. So I think it's this amplifier module which is giving the error. I think to be double sure, if we disconnect this and we can just get the meter and see if it connects to there. Okay, so that's quite easy to disconnect. The brown wire is the top one here, so um, that's going to be the easiest one to get to. Let's have a look. We'll just go for continuity, so we'll go brown in here. Does that go to this one? Yeah, it does. It goes to the brown on that one. Just try another one. I mean, it's possible that one of these wires goes to both anyway, but this is the red. Which looks like it's the second one down on here. Oh, it's a bit hard to get to. Maybe just unplug that as well, actually. Okay, then we can be sure. Yeah, red to red. So this is the amplifier module that's giving the area. I think I'll take that off the amplifier. Well, let's see if we see anything obvious. Well, for once I've found an amplifier that isn't too difficult to get apart. Okay. We have the disconnected wires here and here. I disconnected the pink one from here and the blue one from there. And then we just have the signal input. Okay, we'll get us on the bench and let's have a look at it. Okay, here's our amplifier. I'll just get the worst of the uh, dust and fluff out of this and then we can have a look to see what we have. Well, here are the output devices. They're all the same. So we have all the same type of MOSFET. It just says MOSFET, this thing, not transistor. <laughs> Yeah, they marked on here with gate. Uh, gate P, gate P. I'm not quite sure what P is supposed to mean. I would have thought it was oh, it's D for drain. <laughs> well, let's turn it away up. Gate drain, gate drain, gate drain is marked on all of them. So we have a load of MOSFETs there. We have a sensor. Here, which may well be what we're looking for and we have something else here like a thermal trip or something so that may also be what we're looking for let's have a look we'll go to ohms range well that reads practically short okay that's a short so maybe it should be short and then it just opens at a certain temperature that's mounted on top of one of these mosfets the mosfet under here so most likely that is what's monitoring the temperature of that the other little thing well it goes here and that means about 20 ohms I don't know what it's supposed to read, so I think the best way to figure that out is to take the other one of these off the amplifier and have a look at that one as well and see if we can see any difference between the two. I need to know which is which, possibly. I think they're probably the same, but just to be certain. So I'm going to mark this one with an F for front. It's near the front of the amplifier. Another one will be R for rear, okay? I have them both off the amplifier now. So this one I'll put an X because it's the bad one. That's pointing the arrow in the direction of the front. This is the front module. This is the top. And then the other one that is pointing in the direction of the rear. This is the top. So I know which way round these both fit on the amplifier where they came from. This says sensor and this says termico, which must be thermal. Again on this one, sensor and termico. So I'm assuming termico is a thermal sensor, okay? That comes into this little connector all around this little connector here. And this is where the various 
LEDs attach. So we have no, um, possibly 0 volt there, S, C, E, T and T, E, but there's only four LEDs, so I'm not quite sure which is exactly which. I can't find the schematic for this. We have a TL074 here, so this is a quad op amp, same on this one. It looks like these LEDs are all driven from this op amp, just because of where all the tracks are going there. I'm sure I can just get the front LED panel off and figure out which one of these outputs is the thermal, because it could be that one or that one, I guess, most likely. But I'd say we have somewhere to start, at least. My first thoughts then is to measure the resistance across here. So that reads basically zero. And that reads basically zero. So they're both the same. So it's not as simple as that. Okay. Does this thing connect to two of the inputs on here somewhere? Or maybe one end goes to ground. Well, if that's not volts, third one, just a guess. That does connect to this. So it connects probably also to the op amp, maybe through a resistor. Or a resistor network. Don't see anything there. Doesn't connect directly to the op amp. But I'm fairly confident it does connect here. Could be wrong, it might go directly to this connector. Let's have a look. So. Doesn't go there. Doesn't go there. That's the one we know it goes to. Doesn't go there. Doesn't go there doesn't go there. Let's have a look see if we can see where it does go. Well, it looks like it goes here. Looks like it does go directly to there. Maybe I had a bad connection. Let's have a look. Yeah, one end goes to there, and the other end goes to here. Okay, so if this is like a mechanical type of thing, which just goes open where we reach a certain temperature, they both read closed. Why is the LED on? So I'd like to see what's on the board this goes to. Well, the front panel contains nothing but the LED, so there can't be any circuitry on there that's doing anything. Maybe this is all just a red herring. Let's have a look for other obvious things. So, first of all, let's just measure around the output devices. Okay, so on this one, this is gate, drain, reads open, reads open, looks like the drain and these bolts of the source are all in C, oh, I was going to say they're all in parallel, but it's way off there. That's drain to source, okay, all the way around. That doesn't look right. And then, these appear to be at least the source is on the other half yeah so 
Looks like those all connect all the way through. Yeah, all these are connected together. But then the drain, half of them end up on this plus and half of them end on here. Minus. These must be the supply rails plus and minus. And then I'm guessing the output of the speaker must come from here. The junction, basically. Okay. Let's have a look. So, from the positive rail, that's this one, with the red to the drain, what are we reading? We're reading very low. It took a few seconds to get there, maybe a bad connection. And on the other ones, it doesn't really matter where I put them. The bolts are all the same, okay. From the other side, that means I can resist them climbing up. That's in the reverse because this is the minus rail, so we go black onto here. And that is kind of open. That's what you'd expect. High, high-ish, yeah. With the black to the drain. And then you'd expect with the red to the drain on the positive side, the same thing. And we do have, actually. Okay. It's the reverse direction that means strange. It means very low. Doesn't read low. Reads very low well in the reverse direction. Oh, maybe they are the same. Let's compare it with the other one. So this is the good module. Okay, this is the good one. Let's see. Or presumed good because the protect doesn't come on. Well, that reads kind of like high. And then the reverse reads kind of low. Okay. Bad one. Should be kind of high. Reverse direction. Kind of low. Oh, maybe that is okay. Uh, maybe that is okay. Whoops it. And then, on this side, this is the forward direction. Kind of high. Kind of low. In the reverse. Kind of high in the forward. Kind of low in the reverse. So it looks like they're all reading basically the same. So that's not the cause of the problem. There don't appear to be any problems with any of the output devices. The two modules read basically the same. We have at least a couple of different ways we can go at this now. One is to compare these two amplifying modules on the bench, at least check all the semiconductor junctions everywhere and see if we can see any difference. We can do the same by measuring in diode mode on the op amps in the reverse direction. I've shown this before. We can go down that route and see if we can spot any difference between the two. Another option would be, because these boards are clearly identical, to reverse them in the amplifier. So the one that was in the front on channel one can go in the back on channel two and vice versa. And then see if we have the error on the same amplifier module. If we swap these two over and channel one still has a fault, we know it's something external to these. So we're down to the wiring and the amplifier basically. If the problem is still on channel one, which is now in position two, we know the problem is on the board. And then we can come back and do what we said, which is compare the two. Really, this is kind of like which, you know, which way do you want to go? How lucky do you feel? I think personally, I will just try putting them back in the amplifier, swapped over and see what happens. If we still have the problem on the same board, I'll take them back out and I'll swap these chips over because they're in sockets and they're probably the least easy thing to definitively test and this one is also somewhere in the area of the circuit where the area is on the led the thermal led 
So we can swap the chips over, try again. If having swapped the position of the two boards and swapped the chips and the fault is still on the same board, then we are definitely back to the comparison between the two. We hopefully would see a difference. Yeah, I mean, it's enough of a difference somewhere to light that LED instantly. So we should see a difference. So let's go down that route. But you know, guys, a bit like the queue in the supermarket or at the airport check-in, the one that looks shortest usually ends up being the one that takes the longest. But that's sod's law, yeah. There's no way really, apart from saying, right, now we've decided to do this, let's just go do the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> but sod's law still applies. Okay, so let's stick with plan A, put them back in in the other position and see what happens and go from there. This is the one that's working, the one that was in the rear position. So I actually connected the other one in the same position. This is just balanced on the bolts basically that hold this in place. You'll notice that these are insulated from the heat sink. So obviously the heat sink has some voltage on it when the thing's running. So I've just put it in here so it's not touching anything. It's just balancing on the bolts. So that should be absolutely fine. So let's power up the amplifier with just this one in and let's see whether we still get the thermal area on the other side, the other indicator. I have the camera there so we can see the indicators. Let's see what it does. Well, we don't have an area with that one in that position. Let's put it back in the other position. Just to be sure I haven't mixed these up, I've put the one which I think is the good one back in the rear position. So let's power these up again and let's have a look to see what happens. Well, I have a wire catching in the fan, that's what happens. Move that out of the way. Okay, let's go again, but I didn't see any indicators. Yeah, no areas, no nothing. So let's put them both back in. I've connected my two speakers. I've connected an audio source. So uh, let's see if this is actually working. A bit of audio. Yep. Apart from knocking something on the floor, it's working on both channels. And this raises an interesting point. So, when there's a repair, a repair. I've talked about this before. Did I fix it? Well, we can clearly see we had an error on the thermal all the time. And all I did is well you saw take it apart have a quick look around for anything obvious couldn't find anything then tested the working channel and the non-working channel in the other position to see what would happen fault wasn't there put it back together fault isn't there but something was causing it the only thing i can think is a, a bad connection somewhere but the problem is now it's working so how do we tackle this sort of problem when we get it? If I had somewhere I could run the amplifier at high power for a while, I would do, but as I've mentioned before, I'm not an audio amplifier repair specialist. I'm not really set up for that sort of thing. And being in the shopping center here, I can't make a huge amount of noise either. So I would have to use some sort of dummy load, I guess. Maybe I should get one now because I'm fixing quite a lot of amplifiers. The other possibilities to give this back to the guy who it belongs to and say try it this belongs to the same guy as the other one that i repaired and i did repair the one with the conductive glue basically that was causing problems and then the short circuit diode so we know that one is definitely fixed because they both belong to the same client and they fairly regularly bring stuff, I think I'll be quite happy to say, look, it is working. Can you just go and check it, make sure it's okay? And then I think it's kind of like 
50-50? Is it going to come back or is it not going to come back? I think we'll have to put this down to Richard's magic fingers again because that seems to be what's fixed it. But comments below, guys. Any suggestions how maybe I can prove what the problem actually was because I don't see how I can. And remember, I have no schematics for this one. So this one, I'm kind of on my own with my own intuition, basically. But it's working. Hope you enjoyed that one anyway. A few interesting things to talk about in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you all soon on another Winning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.